So as I mentioned, Innovate Your State, and I am happy to be working uh, with Innovate Your State, as is Allie, who's in the back there too. Um, so Innovate Your State was founded just about a year and a half ago. Um, so we're a new startup, <laughs> and um, we're a nonprofit, as I mentioned, dedicated to improving government outcomes and public participation. So how did we go about doing that? Well, we ran the Fix California Challenge last summer. It was a online crowdsourced challenge. Um, some former, um, former DU students actually participated in that challenge, which was really exciting. And when we put it up online, we really didn't know <laughs> what was going to come out of it, to be totally honest. And we were very, very, um, um, I won't say surprised, but excited by the results. We got over 400 ideas. Um, and a lot of them had to do, they kind of fell into two buckets. One, some of them were on the policy side, and then some of them were gov, tech, and civ tech, business, and nonprofits. So we actually selected um, four as our winning ideas. There were many, many more that came through that were pretty interesting, and I'll talk about the civic tech showcase that, we, um, that highlighted some of those in a second. Um, but the, the first two are on the policy side of things, and the first one, county modernization, um, has to do with that issue that we talked about at the beginning about the actual county line. So there's 58 counties in California right now, and um, you know, they're, they're there for historical reason, reasons, but they don't really reflect the regional economies you know, right, if you've driven or if you came in from SFO, it's not like you passed the county line between San Francisco and San Mateo and saw some, like, remarkable difference. So there's a lot of um, decisions that could be explored to be made on a regional level that would, could improve things for citizens there. So, um, so an example of a region that might look different in the way that it was governed than kind of the Bay Area or Silicon Valley might be the Central Valley. You know, it's, it really relies and has an amazing um, agricultural industry there. So the rules and regulations that would support that kind of business and that kind of economy might look different than what would um, support things here. So that idea was submitted and we, and Innovate Your State is um, going to be looking into that issue. It, it really, you know, is a big <laughs> can of worms. So we wanted to carefully focus and research on, on how things could be restructured and modernized. The California Legislative Transparency Act was actually submitted by a former state assembly member, Sam Blakesley, um, down from the Central Coast, Cal Poly, or uh, he is at Cal Poly now, but San Luis Obispo. I don't think we had any Central Coast folks here. But um, his idea would do two main things in the state legislature. Um, so how many people have watched a video online in the last 24 hours? Everyone. So um, it might surprise you that you can't get access to um, the state legislative hearings online. They kind of pick and choose which ones that they put up now. Um, so this, um, it has turned into an initiative. It would require that all legislative hearings and floor session be recorded and be made online. Kind of a common sense thing for our generation, but we're kind of having to pull the, um, <laughs> the state structure um, into 2016. It would also prevent um, what's called a gut and amend. Does anyone know what a gut and amend is? Poli sci? No. Okay. So at the end of um, at the end of the legislator legislative calendar, sometimes things get crazy. So imagine if you turned in a paper and then um, somebody, your professor, whited it out and just wrote their own words in it. That's kind of what ha can happen at the end of the legislative process. And so by requiring that the words be in print for 72 hours, um, it would provide better, greater transparency um, to the legislative process and hopefully better outcomes um, for citizens like us. What is that called? It's called a gut and amend. Oh, gut and amend. Yeah, like gut it. <laughs> I didn't make up that term. So um, the se <laughs> sorry. second two ideas, um, are on the civic gov tech side. So Place a Vote is a really innovative platform that um, works with candidates who pledge when they run for Congress that they will listen to the voices of their constituents via this online platform. It's actually, um, it uses blockchain, so the same thing that Bitcoin uses to verify that they are a constituent. So if I'm, I'm Caroline, I'm running for Congress, I say that I'm gonna listen to um, what my constituents say via place a vote, then I would go online and say, okay, well, 
what do they think about this you know, marijuana le legalization bill? Or you know, what do they think in, lar in general about this issue? So it's a way of trying to connect, um, trying to bridge the gap and connect voters with, um, with what they're actually doing. And there are some candidates that are running using Place of Vote right now. Um, OpenGov is a financial transparency software. And it helps um, local, mostly local governments um, give better information about their budgets and what they're spending money on to their citizens. Um, and it also improves staff time. Uh, improves um, like uh, lookup requests um, for um, staffers on the back end. So what Innovate Your State did with OpenGov is we said, you know, we really think that this is a powerful tool for transparency and accountability. Um, so we said for any new county in California that signed on, um, we would match their first year of um, expense for using the OpenGov platform since we know that one of the main hurdles for local levels of government especially is it just that they have smaller budgets and you know it can be it's tough enough at you know the the most innovative business office to get new software and to create change but for some of these local governments it's really hard so we've actually had 11 right alley counties sign up now um, so tremendous success um, and we're tracking the results and whether this um, results in you know, more people attending hearings or sending letters or just getting kind of more involved and understanding about what their counties um, are spending their money on. How does it work? How uh, does that transparent for, for citizens? Um, for the counties, so the county um, staff actually has to use their, they basically give them their financial information. They're already tracking all of this. Um, but what they do, the OpenGov interface allows for, you know, the county of YOLO, which is an awesome county name, by the way, um, to, um, to have the, a link on their website that shows, you know, I can click and say, all right, well, how much, how much uh, money is being spent on public safety on police in my county? And then I can click on that and I can get to um, how much, you know, what are they spending on uniforms, for example? So uh, however, whatever level you want to see that data, um, it's, exactly. Sure. Is that using, um blockchain as well, or is that uh, just sort of information provided by the local county? Great question. Um, so that is not based on the blockchain. Um, it's actually public information that is technically available upon request, but raise your hand here if you've ever requested county financial information. Nobody? <laughs> so, um, <laughs> yay! <laughs> um, we got one. So, um, but the idea is making it available online in a, in a um, customer friendly way is really how government should be putting this information that is public information out there. You know, we're all taxpayers, so we're all, um, you know, we, sh we should have access to this information. Right. Like government should encourage transparency. Exactly. Okay. 